and Shield. Guardian Heroes is a generational classic, one of the Sega Saturn's best games, still a joy to play to this day, and the sort of thing sweaty spods like me will waffle on about being a real game or some such insufferable nonsense. It's brilliant, and it was a real feather in the cap for Saturn owners who could lord it over their PlayStation owning chums as those Sony idiots, sorry for the bad language, didn't have Guardian Heroes. They had nothing of the sort the idiots. Except it sort of turns out the PlayStation did have its own Guardian Heroes. Not a sequel, not literally a Guardian Heroes game, I know there's a lot of you out there with brains that work like Drax the Destroyer, so just to reiterate, it's not literally Guardian Heroes on PlayStation. But at the same time, Panzer Bandit from developer Phil and Cafe has a lot more of the treasure developed great in its DNA than you might expect from a clickbaity title. First up, it's a good game. I'm speaking in the present tense, which I don't normally do, I'm sure nobody had noticed it till I said it, but here we are. Panzer Bandit is a good game. Not the best, and certainly something better enjoyed in brief spurts here and there, rather than sat down with and poured over for endless hours on... end. But it's entertaining, and mixes the simplicity of button bash and combat with the slight complexity of special moves, combos, juggling, and good solid fighting game mechanics like that. Just like... Yep, Guardian Heroes, Panzer Bandit is, at its core, a solid, enjoyable brawling romp that practically anyone able to hold a controller will be able to play a bit and do some cool shit in. And from there, the Guardian Heroes comparisons continue. The art style, while not identical, has definite similarities. 2D sprites riddled with gorgeous animation, making their way about 2D planes, engaging in 2D combat with 2D enemies, in which you're able to switch which 2D plane you're on at 2D will, multiple 2D characters to 2D players with 2D unlockable ones you encounter along the 2D way. It's all very Guardian Heroesy. Sure, Panzer Bandit has 3D backgrounds where Guardian Heroes saw 2D ones, the PlayStation games' fights only take place on two planes compared to the Saturn games' three, and there's far fewer characters on Bandit than on Heroes, but there's a lot about the two games that matches up and makes it easy to claim Panzer Bandit as the PlayStation's own Guardian Heroes. And that's it, that's the end of the comparison. I don't want to talk about the rest of the stuff because it means doing a bit more reading and writing of a script, I know. Okay then. Here we go. There's a lot more to the surface level comparisons between Panzer Bandit and Guardian Heroes. These two games aren't just a bit similar, they're intertwined in a few interesting ways. So Panzer Bandit was unsurprisingly inspired by Guardian Heroes, but it also took some cues from an unreleased fighting game by Treasure called Axion. Axion didn't completely die, and actually ended up being reworked into a title that was very much released by the name of Yu Yu Hasukusho Makyo Toitsusen, sorry for the pronunciations here, to give it its full title. Yu Yu, from Treasure, was also an inspiration on Guardian Heroes, what with the two titles coming from the same studio and all, with Treasure's president saying the team wanted to evolve the Yu Yu experience for Guardian Heroes. At the same time, Panzer Bandit also took inspiration from a game called Mad Stalker Full Metal Fourth, a 1994 release from Phil in Cafe. Bandit didn't just take inspiration from Mad Stalker though, it took the game's engine too. Obviously there were tweaks and improvements along the way, multiplanar combat for one, but it's clear to see the links between the two games. Unsurprising given they were both from the same dev team, but Mad Stalker was also a named inspiration on Guardian Heroes. So Panzer Bandit was influenced by Guardian Heroes and that game's precursor, Yu Yu Hasukusho Makio Toitsusen, but used the engine of Mad Stalker Full Metal Fourth, which was in turn a big influence on Guardian Heroes. Meaning Panzer Bandit was based on a game that inspired the game that inspired it. Clear? Clear. But wait, there is, of course, more. One of the designers behind Mad Stalker, Masaki Ukyo, left Filling Cafe following the release of that game. His destination? Treasure. First thing he did at the new studio? Worked as a programmer on Yu Yu Hasukusho Makio Toitsusen. Second thing? Directed Guardian Heroes. But he was only one of the designers behind Mad Stalker, so what about the other one? Well, that was a chap by the name of Masatoshi Imaizumi who went from Mad Stalker to make, well, Macaruna Makendo 2, but after that, he went on to help create Asuka 120% Maxima Burning Fest. Huh. 
In 1997, though, Imaizumi would finally get to the point I'm trying to make and would end up as one of the main designers on, yep, Panzer Bandit. Like I said, intertwined. Is it much of a surprise that Ukiyo and Imaizumi went on to form their own company together? Well, they did, apparently, and it was called RUN, Release Universal Network, but I can't find anything other than 2013's Phantom Breaker Battlegrounds with the company's name attached, though both the developers do show up in other games, and no, I'm not going down this rabbit hole right now. Still, it's a nice bit of colour to go with the whole story, isn't it? Even with all the pedigree and it being a genuinely good game, Panzer Bandits never really caught on in the popular gaming collective memory. It's known, and the likes of Hardcore Gaming 101 have excellent write-ups on it, I cribbed a fair bit from that and it's linked below, but in the general discussion of good games from the 90s that we've all forgotten about, well, Panzer Bandit tends to get forgotten. I think it's easy to see why this one was overlooked. It doesn't really have the staying power, the long-term replayability of its stablemate on Saturn. Obviously, it didn't help that the name Treasure was nowhere to be seen on Panzer Bandit, nor was it a big aid that the game didn't release outside of Japan. But even factoring those factors in, I do think it's pretty straightforward why this one didn't become any real cult classic. Once you've played through it a couple of times, that's pretty much it. It's the same thing over and over. No alternative routes, no feeling of agency in upgrading your character's abilities, no massive range of characters to choose from on the way. No, Panzer Bandit is more of a cult cult classic that only the truly sneering elitists of gaming know anything about. Sneer. I, I don't know how to make the sound of a sneer. All that said, and to reiterate once more for those in the cheap seats, Panzer Dragoon, Panzer General. What the hell's it called? Panzer Bandit is still really good fun. A solid 7 out of 10 considering the era it came out with, and a wee little hidden gem in the PlayStation's back catalogue, with a wonderfully weaving woven tale of inspiration and heritage supporting it all. It's not a game I'm going to be rushing back to play now I've done this brief video, but it is one I'm happy to have played. And that's more than I can say for something like Far Cry 6. Thanks for watching, and special thanks to my Fiverr and Above patrons on Patreon, links below if you want to join them. And bigger specialer thanks to my higher tier supporters who you can also join by using that very same link I just mentioned. Paintball Magazine PBM, Lola Osman, Takara Hoshi. I'm off to Panzer some Bandits. Bye!